Nigerian senators from the People's Democratic Party have said they will begin impeachment proceedings against President Muhammad Buhari. We will look at the reasons behind this and its possibility. Nigeria's currency, the Naira, has fallen to record lows against the U.S. dollar. Why is a once booming economy struggling? We're joined by an expert later for analysis on this. And of course, we'll have in-depth analysis of the headlines in today's national dailies. Welcome, a very good morning to you. I apologize for bringing the program behind shadow. My name is Kofi Bartels. We start with a top trending segment uh, where the Socioeconomic Rights Accountability Project, a non government organization or civil society organization, has said they will sue, as I've actually said they will sue Governor Emmanuel Odom of Aquibom State over the treatment, uh, the detention of human rights lawyer Inibe Effiong. Uh, Nibe Fiong released a video shared on social media uh, and, of course, some tweets that he put out yesterday uh, that brought attention uh, to his plight. Uh, there's been a case going on between uh, the governor of Akwaibom State, Emmanuel Udom, and, of course, uh, uh, a lawyer in Akwaibom State who goes by the name Mr. Leo Ekpeong. The governor had uh, won a $1.5 billion uh, Naira lawsuit against uh, this lawyer for uh, defamation. Uh, Ini Befiong is simply defending the lawyer uh, in court. So he put out a detailed uh, account of what went, what transpired in court, uh, some issues raised by the human rights lawyer. Uh, he said that when he got to court, he noticed that um, uh, uh, his lordship, the judge, the trial judge, uh, Judge Akaito, both in this case, had uh, walked into the court and had allowed a permitted armed policeman to access the court, get into the courtroom, and uh, this was uh, what made him uncomfortable. Now, you're looking at pictures of the uh, trial judge, a Kaito boat. Now, a Kaito boat happens to be also the chief judge of Akwaibom State, uh, sworn in by the governor of Akwaibom State himself, uh, Governor Emmanuel Udom. Now, another thing that Inibe F. Young reported in his tweets is that um, the the trial judge, uh, Ekaito Bud, who is also the chief judge of Akwaibom State, ordered a reporter who had come into the, the courtroom to observe proceedings and, uh, of course, report on it, uh, a reporter of the Premium Times newspaper. Uh, she ordered him, him, to leave the courtroom. And Inibe F. Young also said he didn't see, uh, his, he found that wrong. Uh, even though the, the reporter identified himself as a uh, working with a newspaper and an online uh, media called Premium Times, uh, the judge ordered that um, he should leave. Now, Ibe Fiong said he made to um, uh, object to the presence of the, soldier, the armed policemen in court, uh, telling the judge that uh, this was against uh, normal practice and that she should please order, uh, her lordship rather should order uh, his lordship should order the, uh, the armed policemen to leave the premises. However, however, according to him in the video he recorded and also a series of uh, tweets that he put out, uh, he said that the, the, the judge did not uh, find that um, uh, flattering at all. Uh, he also reminded the judge that uh, he had applied for uh, her to recuse herself from the case, citing uh, a suspicion or a feeling by his client, Leo Ekpeyong, uh, that the judge was biased in this, uh, in this case. And that, uh, you know, pending the determination or the, the decision on that application for a recusal, that um, she wasn't meant to be there. And so he also reminded her that she was meant to have recused herself or what he called willingly uh, withdrawn uh, from the case. And uh, she also uh, did not uh, find this uh, flattering at all. And ordered you know, Lee Befiong to remove his robe and to also order the policeman there to take him away and sentence him to, uh, to one month in prison. Now, some points to note. Um, what is a recuser? A recuser is basically an application for uh, a judge who is sitting on a matter to 
withdraw from that uh, that matter. And I was speaking to a couple of lawyers since this news broke yesterday, and what they tell me is that um, uh, most judges would voluntarily withdraw from matters if the field any of parties is not comfortable with them uh, sitting on that matter. Uh, of course, the judges are, are saddled and overwhelmed at times with cases, you know, so <laughs> the less the merrier, you would say. Um, so uh, some, some lawyers I've spoken to say, you know, the, uh, what happens is that when this application for recusal is made, I mean, the, the, the application goes to the table of uh, the, the chief judge of the, of the state. Of course, it is the head of the state judiciary that assigns the case files to the different judges or to the different courts because each judge has his court. All right, each judge has his court. So in this case, it was the, uh, the um, my lord, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Chief Justice of Aquaibum State, uh, Chief Judge of Aquaibum State, uh, Justice Akaita Wood, who assigned uh, this case to herself. Um, some would say, okay, if there's nothing uh, personal you know, for you, uh, nothing sentimental for you with this particular case, then maybe you should um, you should not have any problem, you know, handing the case file to another judge. After all, all the judges of the Aquaibum State High Court are competently qualified to handle uh, this particular case. You know, any case for the matter for that matter. Uh, if you have any doubts over the credibility, uh, the fitness of any judge in handling any case, you know, in Aquaibum State from the Aquaibum State Judiciary, then they should not be in service, they should not be having a job as a judge, you know, for that much. Because as a judge, you have the lives are in your hands. The future of the, the present and the future of the state and of the country is in your hand. So um, some, some people feel that, you know, if there was nothing uh, sentimental or nothing personal for the judge, in this case, the chief judge, she could assign this case to some other person, not to herself. Some also say, you know, some are of the view that because she was um, sworn in uh, by the uh, governor of the state and because she's paid a salary by the governor of the state, um, she has to get that money and then administer the judiciary in the state, that maybe uh, there is a, uh, there could be possibilities of a conflict of interest here. I mean, this is not on our part here at Plus TV Africa to doubt the credibility of uh, uh, her lordship or his lordship, the uh, Honorable uh, Justice Akaita Board, who is the Chief Judge of uh, Kwaibom State. No, but this is what some people out there uh, are discussing and are saying. And that's what we bring to you on the top training series. Now, apart from this refusal to recuse uh, by the, the application and refusal to recuse, uh, the trial judge, who incidentally is the uh, Chief Judge of um, uh, Kwaibom State, ordered the Premium Times reporter to leave the, the courtroom. Now, this was before the premium times, uh, the, the arrest and detention of Inibe Effing, the human rights lawyer. We're told yesterday from our sources in New York that uh, this premium times reporter was uh, detained briefly, was arrested and detained briefly on the orders of the, the judge. We're not given any reason why she asked for you know, his arrest, his ejection, arrest and detention. We're not given any reason uh, why she also ordered the uh, arrest and uh, imprisonment of Inibe Efion, uh, the human rights lawyer. But what we know is that the Premium Times has given this particular story coverage and priority. I mean, if you want to check, you know, we ought to go back in time to the case last year when um, uh, the trial judge, uh, my lord, the Honorable Justice Ekaite Obot, uh, who is also the chief judge of Aquabon State, where she said to Dear Befion, quote, you know, well, this is not quoting us, so not, I take back the quote, where she said to him, you are not on channels, television, uh, neither are you on Aquabon State uh, uh, Broadcasting Corporation. She scolded him for the way he was talking and uh, told him that uh, I have more than 30 years of experience doing this job. You're not, you can't come and teach me law, is what she said to him. And also, when they had a resumed hearing uh, on the 2nd of July, 2022. Uh, the trial judge, Milord, the Honorable Justice, Ekaito Wood, uh, threatened to imprison, to derobe, 
and imprison uh, Ineba Efion. She actually made this threat on the 2nd of July, 2022. Uh, so for some who have been following the case, this was simply and merely um, uh, a pre, uh, predetermined uh, action all right, this was simply uh, uh, her carrying out this threat that she had already issued on the 2nd of July. And some suspect that uh, maybe the, the reporter was asked to leave the court so that the, f the further proceedings will not um, uh, be, be covered. Now, on this 2nd of July 2022, where she threatened to derobe and arrest and imprison in uh, the, the this particular Premium Times reporter wrote a story on it and said that there was a series of bizarre incidents in the in the court including uh, the judge asking a kaito boat my lord the honorable justice kaito boat asking everybody present at the court to hand over their phones to the police because um uh, she didn't want anyone to record the proceedings of that day so this is what's been happening we hear that anybody is still in court the uyo prison initially refused to accept him because he didn't see any documents indicating that he went to court he was sentenced so that they could process his um his imprisonment but later he was uh, accepted and he has since been placed in prison in prison as we speak the reporter premium times has since been released and allowed to go home and this is what we have uh in nigeria today um it's not about pdp or apc uh you can see that uh, even though it's it's the country's the same judiciary in a Kwabom state, you have a, a PDP government. This is not saying the governor is, is guilty of anything, but in case people want to look at the political side of things, um, some will say they are all the same. Some is twins, if you will. Let's move on uh, to the next trending story. Take one more uh, before we uh, we say goodbye and move on to other things on the program this morning. Uh, quite some very sad uh, and disheartening news. We had yesterday the passing of a, a diplomat, a very respected uh, and foremost Nigerian uh, diplomat, some would call him an elder statesman. For when I saw the story, my heart jumped, and it still jumped when I discovered who it was. The first thing I said was, whoa, is this, you know, someone else? We have a, a leading uh, Naja Delta elder statesman, but it wasn't him. Uh, it was uh, Ambassador Blessing at Porode Clark. Uh, still, it's a sad one, uh, who died at the age of 92 in Lagos. Ambassador Blessing Akborode Clark is a foremost diplomat. Um, he is the younger brother of, uh, you know, the leader of the Pan Niger Delta Forum, uh, Niger Delta activist and elder statesman, and the former federal commissioner uh, of information and South South leader, Chief Edwin Kiagbodo Clark. He's a younger, uh, elder brother, sorry, younger brother of uh, Chief Edwin Kiagbodo uh, Clark. He died at the age of 92. In Lagos. May so rest in peace. There was a statement released uh, on the passing of uh, this gentleman uh, by Dr. Christopher Clark on behalf of the family. And it highlighted his sterling uh, career as a diplomat in service to his motherland, uh, Nigeria. For those who do not know, um, uh, Ambassador Blessing Akorde Clark, C O N, uh, was Nigeria's ambassador to Ethiopia uh, and permanent representative to the Organization of African Unity, which is what the African Union uh, was known back in the, day, the days of uh, the likes of Butchers, Butchers Kali. Uh, ambassador Clark was also uh, Nigeria's ambassador to Switzerland and permanent representative of Nigeria to the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, he was Nigerian ambassador and, per and permanent uh, representative to the United Nations in New York. These are positions in the foreign service you hold only if you are qualified because these are the highest of the lot. Um, so the family has released information as officially uh, told the public uh, on behalf of the Bede, uh, De Beke Deremo Fuludu Clark family uh, of uh, Kiagbodo town in Brutu, local government area of Delta State. Uh, they have officially announced with profound sadness the passing into glory of Nigeria's foremost diplomat Ambassador Blessing at Borde Clark C O N on the 26th of July 2022 in Lagos. Um, uh, he was 92. May so rest in peace.
Okay, uh, that's the much we'll take on the top trending segment. We'll return with analysis of a new super headlines. Energy feed. Please stay with us. <laughs>